Hi, I clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Saturday, September 7th, and here are the Atlantic three days from the peak of the hurricane season. Still no hurricanes. If we go four more days without one, uh, then it will be the latest date in the satellite era um, past which the first hurricane formed. So bottom line, it's been a pretty weak season compared to expected activity levels thus far. And we'll look more at that as the season gets older, but there's still a lot of season left and a lot of room for activity to ramp up. And the rest of September still looks to be pretty favorable for some more storms to get going. And if we look at the Atlantic right now, there actually has been a lot of action. We had Tropical Storm Gabrielle form here. It's been a while since I made a video on her, the reason being she dissipated near Eastern Dominican Republic a couple of days ago and uh, still moving very slowly onto the north here. And you can see a little bit of a broad circulation still trying to establish itself in here and conditions aren't impossible for this to come back and become a storm as it heads very slowly off to the north here and likely eventually off to out to sea and Bermuda may have to still keep a wary eye on this as it comes off this way uh, may may develop back into a storm probably unlikely to get very strong it would have had to be a, a strengthening storm here in order to become a hurricane but since it's weak now uh, the shear up here uh, will likely keep this uh, as a tropical storm if it does redevelop prior to moving out. We had Tropical Depression 8 develop right before moving into Mexico yesterday. This was the system we mentioned uh, should be watched as it came across the Yucatan Peninsula and was able to wind up. A lot of systems do this in the southwestern Gulf. It's a typically very favorable area whenever convection gets going in there. And we see, uh, even though the, the depression moved inland, we have a lot of convection hanging back out over the water. And some of the models are suggesting that we get uh, even one more low to form in here and then move inland again. So uh, we may even get a second try at a tropical depression um, in this area during the next five to seven days. So we'll keep an eye on that. We have this big low out here west of the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, this will eventually come westward in here, but it looks likely to die. And we have a lot of dry air uh, being just pounded down into the central Atlantic. The intertropical convergence zone doesn't even exist down here. And this has been the problem this year. The central Atlantic, the very area that I thought would be pretty favored this year, so far hasn't been able to light up. It's been very favorable out to about here in the eastern Atlantic. We've had very strong waves. This one's pretty strong. The one behind it's very strong. And we're starting to get really active in this area here. We've had a lot of convection going off as the MJO starts spilling over into the western Atlantic and giving upward motion there. But right in the middle here is the big problem because these waves are generally what give a lot of ACE points to the hurricane season as they get intense and have long track storms. But these waves out here have just been unable to survive a track across the Atlantic. So what we're left with is short-lived storms out here that die and then short-lived storms over here that end up running into land before they can get very strong. So overall, uh, this hurricane season has been a little bit different. Uh, but you notice that, uh, again, uh, we're getting more active in here, and a lot of convection has been going off, and we've had a couple of storms now, and this is likely to continue um, as we move on over the next couple of weeks, and I'll talk about that in a second. Quickly, though, uh, looking over by Africa, we have a big wave coming off the coast, and the models have been really latched onto this, pretty excited about it, and uh, the models all have this developing into at least a strong tropical storm as it gets out into the eastern North Atlantic. And uh, they do have it recurving out here, but it does give us our best shot likely so far to finally get a hurricane. It will be interesting to see if it can beat that September 11th record and become a hurricane before that point. But the NHC is giving it a high chance out here. And uh, I would agree based solely on model support here. And uh, it'll probably get over colder water eventually. And most of the models have it just recurving very early. So fairly likely not to be much of a worry for any land areas except possibly some bad weather in the Cape Verde Islands over here. Now, in terms of uh, the Caribbean in the United States and uh, potential impacts to land, what is it looking like for the next couple of weeks? Well, here's what we have going on in the upper levels. This is the European Ensemble Mean Day 1, 500 millibar height. So we have another trough coming into the northeast. And uh, we've talked about this in the last couple of videos that we've had a lot of troughs that have dug into the northeastern United States, but they keep leaving quickly. Why? Because we have a lot of warm water off of Newfoundland here. And uh, this is fighting these troughs. And so whenever they dig in like this, they tend to leave quickly. So we see day one, trough digs in. Day three, it's gone. You have ridging building in behind. We go out to day six, trough digs into the northeast. By day eight, it's leaving. And by 10, it's gone. And you have ridging building in over the top. And here's what this does. If we go to this trough here, when you get these troughs digging in like this, what it does is it weakens the subtropical ridge near 30 north. And when you do that, you allow tropical moisture 
to swell northward. A lot of the, a lot of times when you have a strong ridge down in the southeastern United States, you cap the moisture so far south that it really can't bundle up far enough north to uh, develop a storm. But when you when you dig these troughs in, it, it lets the tropics swell forth here. But then when the trough leaves, what happens is you start building pressures behind the trough at the surface over the eastern and southeastern United States. But since you've brought the moisture northward, now what you're doing is you have a big H here. You have a big high pressure. And uh, if I can even draw my H here. It starts throwing air southward and you start increasing convergence and lowering pressures down to the south. So this cycle of troughs digging in and then leaving really helps to incubate this area of the world right here. And I really should be including the Gulf of Mexico in this uh, because uh, we're seeing this area lighting up now in this pattern where troughs dig in and then leave really starts building the pressures in here. And we see this on the GFS ensemble mean 11 to 15 day uh, MSLP anomaly. A sea level pressure anomaly and you see the the pressures building uh, in general to the northeast and then lowering pressures down here to the south and you see some low pressures out here too likely due to some recurving storms coming off of Africa but it's here where most of the action may be focused over the next week or two um, as uh, pressures build up here and these troughs come in and then leave again the pressures here are reversing uh, because of the time of year and the fact that the water is so warm here that these troughs can't stick around very long you get high pressure develop developing behind you increase convergence and help focus energy in an area where it can possibly concentrate and develop into storms down here and the GFS ensembles have been hinting at some storms trying to develop in this area on the ensemble members for the last couple of days as we get deeper into mid-September. So it very well may be that this area of the Central Atlantic doesn't see as much action as it might have been thought earlier this year and a lot of these Cape Verde storms may be uh, short-lived and a lot of them seem to be recurving right now into colder water pretty far to the east, but it may be that the upward motion that has been so prominent in the eastern Pacific so far starts spilling over into the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico like it has been over the last week or so. And uh, with the pattern flipping up here with lots of ridging showing up, uh, this is a prime pattern for getting some kind of development down here. So even though the season so far has been less active than normal, don't forget that we're only halfway through it and uh, we could very well get a storm right in the middle of these land areas in a pattern like this that could come right up and affect the Caribbean islands, uh, Central America, or the United States. And uh, one of those could be a hurricane. It's that time of year. And remember, this area of the world here can get hurricanes right through October. So we have a long way to go yet. So don't let your guard down. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.